Please rise. Hello, God, forward march. Please put your right hand over your heart as the flags pass by. Post the flag in the city of Guinda. Post the flag of the state of California. Display the flag of the United States of America. Audience, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. We post the flag of the United States of America. Color guard salute. Two. Color guard at wing. Hello, God, dismissed. Audience, you may be seated. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Henrik Sarder Began, and I'm the current president of the, there you go, uh, Glendale Parks and Rex Commission. Um, to begin, I'd like to, okay. I'd like to uh, call out some of our wonderful dignitaries that have joined us for today's uh, wonderful event. First and foremost, our amazing uh, Mayor um, Paula Devine. <laughs> Council Member Artie Kasakian. <laughs> Council Member Dan Brotman. <laughs> Council Member Ara Najarian. <laughs> Council Member Brej Arajanian. From Congressman Adam Sheff's office, Mary Hovagimian. <laughs> California State Senator, Mr. Anthony Portantino. <laughs> California State Assembly Member, Ms. Laura Friedman. <laughs> Los Angeles County Board of uh, Supervisor, 5th District. Uh, on behalf of uh, Ms. Catherine Berger, Jason Maruka. And now some of our city staff. Uh, city manager, Mr. Rubik Golanian. City attorney, Mr. Mike Garcia. Deputy city manager, Mr. John Tachtalian. Fire Chief, Mr. Silvio Lanzas. <laughs> Director of Community Services and Parks, my good friend, Mr. Onik Bolanakian. <laughs> Director of Community Development, Mr. Philip Lanzafame. <laughs> Our Police Chief, Carl Pavelaitis. Then some of my colleagues. First, Mr. Ara Kalafian from the Glendale City uh, Parks and Rec Commission. Mr. Stephen Meek from our Parks Commission. Ms. Regina Joy Alcazar from the Parks and uh, Rec Commission. We're almost done. <laughs> Glendale Parks and Open Space President Paul Robinoff. Glendale Parks and Open Space member, Manuel Magapagian. <laughs> Glendale Parks and Open Space member, Mr. Michael Bridges. <laughs> Glendale Parks and Open Space member, Andrew Jenks. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> now who's excited to get in there and enjoy the wonderful space that we have? So let's, let's get some energy. 
So before I introduce uh, our mayor, I'm going to give you some facts that most of you probably don't know about. Uh, the Dukmenjin wild, uh, Wilderness Parks and uh, the, the history of the barn. So first and foremost, the land was originally purchased in 1898 by Mr. George Lemenege. I hope I got that right. It's a French name and it's very difficult, but... Um, so the, the park is approximately 709 acres in total, of which 12 acres of it is actually developed. So we have a lot of um, organic land here for us to enjoy. Um, 709 acres. I heard that. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Lemenege um, grew and harvested grapes on the property and then sent them to his winery in LA, the Le Ménager Winery. Between 1914 and 1918, the original barn was built. The barn unfortunately burned down in 1933 in the fire and was rebuilt in 1937 with an upper, upper floor that was used as a residence. Now tell me how many of you would love to live here and enjoy this as your backyard. Developer Bill Bliss from Inner Valley Ranch purchased the property in 1968 with intentions to build 250 to 350 homes on the site. Now, who's excited that no homes were built here? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bliss, for not building homes. So the uh, city finally obtained an option on the property in 1986 and completed a park concept plan in 1987 and officially purchased the site in 1988. Between 1989 to now, the park has gone through many phases of development, which Mayor Devine will uh, share with us shortly. To make nature edu education accessible to all the uh, residents of Glendale. Today, we are celebrating the final completion of the Stone Barn Nature Center. Inside, you will find interactive displays to help visitors interpret the human natural history of the park and the region. These include displays on how to safely enjoy the wilderness, the history and the impact of the fire in the area, and the interactions we have with wildlife in our area. For all the children out there, there's a children's area with interactive microscopes and learning tools for young visitors to learn um, and take steps to save the natural uh, life that we have here. Animals representative of all wildlife found in the area in our backyards um, there's also information about that. So in trying to keep my message so short, I will invite our mayor, uh, Mayor Devine, to give some words on this wonderful opportunity that we have to be here. Mayor Devine. Yeah. What a glorious morning, isn't it? It's just beautiful, and what a wonderful reason to be here in this beautiful uh, park. Uh, I'm so excited to be here uh, for the grand opening of the Stone Barn Nature Center. I want to start today with a huge thank you to our fantastic staff in the Parks Department. I know that you've been working tirelessly to bring this project to fruition and coordinate this wonderful event. I applaud you for all of your efforts. Let's give them a round of applause. You know, I'm laughing because some of them weren't even born when this started happening, right? 30 years in the making, fantastic. Um, 30 years ago, the city had a vision for the area and we continue to refine that vision as we move forward today. The city officially purchased the site in 1988 for $5.2 million. The park was renamed in 1989 to Duke Majin Wilderness Park, named after, of course, our California governor, George Duke Majin, as he assisted with securing state funding for the purchase. Three years later, the master plan and the environmental documentation of the park were completed in 1992, which recommended then that the barn be restored and used as an interpretive center. Development of the park has taken place in four phases over the past 30 years. Phases one, two, and three completed the 12-acre developed portion of the park and cost $6.87 million. If anybody's keeping track, someone have a calculator? I'll give you the sum at the end. 
Phase one was the discovery phase, of course, where historic assessments of the barn and the shed were done, structural analysis of 3,000 square foot unreinforced masonry structure behind you, temporary seismic bracing, removal of the decaying interior wooden elements and second story, and removal of the soil on the ground inside the barn. Phase two uh, was the trails. That was uh, construction of five trails, totaling 4.5 million, five mile, five million, 4.5 <laughs> miles within the park. Then phase three occurred, and that was the park center development. It was completed in 2004. Construction of the park center area, a new entry road and utility corridor, a meadow with picnic tables, two picnic shelters, restrooms, walkway paths, a small amphitheater for outdoor programs, and two parking lots. Repair of the old stone shed, turning it into the maintenance shed, uh, weatherproofing the barn, and the cost of these three phases, $6.86 million. Phase four, which we are here today, completed barn and restroom construction at the cost of $4.425 million. Seismic upgrades were done and by, finished by 2011. Installation of the HVAC system, plumbing and electrical, finished in 2017. Installation of concrete slab floor, steel and glass storefront entry, doors, installation of the restroom building, completion of interpretive center and community building. That comes to a total, in case you're not counting, are you counting, boys? $11.3 million. And worth, as I might add, every penny, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, where did we get all of this money? Where did the funding come from? City capital improvement funds? LA County grants, state grants, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy grant, and development impact fees. We owe a special thanks to various granting agencies for grant funds. LA County grant funds granted us 2.27 million, state grant funds 200,000, Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy grant funds for phase four seismic upgrades 1 million, and LA County Prop A funds in the amount of 425,000. So, here we are today, because parks, as we all know, are the cornerstone of every community. No matter the timeline on this project, the investment in Glendale parks and open spaces is priceless. Spaces like this, one, they beautify and strengthen our communities and improve our physical and psychological well-being. Don't you love to come here and just walk the trails and enjoy the outdoors? It's absolutely tranquil. The Stone Bars, Barns completion would not have been possible without, of course, the assistance from our partners, which I mentioned. Uh, this project was truly, truly a regional effort to restore history and to provide our community with a one-of-a-kind experience. The Stone Barn Nature Center acts as the entryway or the portal to the Duke Majin Wilderness Park. It will connect visitors to the park, expand their knowledge of the area's history, and offer insights into our connections with nature. And I am absolutely excited about the ability of our children, our students from our um, school district to come here and learn about our park, about our city, about our wildlife, flora, fauna, etc. This is going to be a wonderful educational facility. And so for that, I would like to say I'm excited to explore this. You know, I've come to Duke Majin many times, and when I come into the parking lot, I, I always ask people, where are you from? You know, a lot of times, most of the time, they're from all over, Pasadena, La Cunada, and beyond. So it's not only Glendalians who are going to enjoy this park, but people from all over this area in the region. I am so proud of our parks department, of everyone that contributed with grant funding to make this possible. And I hope that you will all enjoy it. And I'm so happy that so many of you are here 
uh, this is uh, amazing, the, uh, the support uh, for this beautiful park. Um, so at this time, um, um, I'd like to introduce my colleagues. So may I have uh, Vred Jagajanian and Aaron Ajarian, uh, Dan Brotman, and Artie Kasakian, my fellow colleagues on council, come up and say a few words. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. I promise I'll be very brief, but what an exciting day it is to open up the visitor center and the activity center, the interactive center of the Stone Barn. This is such a great resource that the city of Glendale has, and this barn really caps it off like the crown jewel. So thank you to everyone. We forgot to mention Jess Duran, our former parks and, uh, and rec uh, department head who played a big role in this. Jess, where are you? He's here, we brought him out of retirement. He's hiding in the back, but uh, thank you, Jess. And I hope you all tell your friends about this great resource we have. Come up, hike, see the great displays we have, and enjoy Duke Bajan Wilderness Park. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, thanks for coming. Uh, I also will try to be brief here. Um, I was here um, with probably many of you, what was it, a month or two ago when we unveiled the mosaic right to my left here. So make sure you take a look at that. It's beautiful. But at the time, I, I, I said that I have tried but never actually made it to the top of Mount Lucan's here. Um, so, and I offered if anybody wants to go on a hike with me and try to get all the way there and back, let me know. I had no takers. So I'm gonna put out the offer again. Um, I've tried many times, but each time I kind of poop out halfway. But it's, the point is that there, this is a huge park and there's so much of it that very few of us probably have ever really touched. Um, so make use of it. And the stone barn here is another reason to come and enjoy the park and the mosaic. And thank you to the parks department, all the people over the last 20, 30 years that have been involved in making this a reality. I'll try to be brief as well. Uh, I want to just simply say that we're here appreciating land that didn't necessarily belong to any of us long before any of us were here. This land belonged to the native peoples uh, of this uh, continent. And they have an important saying, many tribes have it, they say that we don't inherit the land from our parents, we borrow it from our children. So to all the children that are here, thank you for allowing us to have this. We promise to pass it on to you in better shape, hopefully, than it was handed to us. And this interpretive center is gonna help educate us all on how we can do that. So thank you to everyone, staff, previous councils, all our elected officials who made it possible, and of course the community for your support. Give yourselves a big round of applause, thank you. Hello, my name is Vrej Agijanian. I'm a TV host and commentator anyway. I have a suggestion for all of you. If somebody comes to visit you in Glendale, do not take them south of Glendale. <laughs> don't do it. We don't have parks there. Definitely bring them here and show them this beautiful park and you will give them the impression that all Glendale, everywhere in Glendale, we have such a great park. So if you have a relative comes to visit you, don't forget to bring them to this park. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you to my colleagues. Um, the Duke Majin family could not be here today. And so I have a letter that they sent and I would like to share it with all of you. Greetings from the Duke Majin family. Congratulations on this special day to the Glendale community in recognition of the Stone Barn Nature Center grand opening. Our dad was truly humbled to have a beautiful park named after him in a city where he had so many friends. We share in your excitement on the completion of a long awaited venture. Protecting natural settings in our bustling cities offer adventure, tranquility, and education. We are reminded of continued responsibility to preserve the outdoors and all it provides. 
we send our warmest regards to the city of Glendale for creating yet another special spot of enjoyment for the friends and families of the Glendale community. <laughs> Sincerely, the Duke Majin family, Gloria, Leslie, George and Sarah, Andrea and Brad, and grandchildren, Samantha, William, Dylan, Holden, Anna, and Lucas. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the park. Enjoy the park. Before I introduce you uh, to our next speaker, uh, I'm going to touch on what Councilmember uh, Kasakian said. Children, all the children out there, listen up. This message is for you guys. I need every one of you to agree to one contract that you guys are going to have with me. I need each and every one of you, at least once a month, to put your iPads down, to put the cell phones down, beg, plea, nag, yell, scream, whatever you can for your parents to bring you out here at least once a, once a month. Hopefully twice a month, but at least once a month, okay? Because this is a wonderful, beautiful place to actually enjoy and be part of nature. And I think that if the, the one thing that we should have all learned from what happened uh, starting in March of 2020 uh, till now, it's the fact that, you know, we don't know what waits us, you know, in life. Good, bad, you know, sad, happy, but... Nature is always here for us, and we should always turn to nature and this wonderful opportunity that we have. So to all the kids out there, we officially have a contract, okay? And you're not going to break the contract with this attorney. <laughs> so <laughs> Now, um, I'd like to introduce an extremely hardworking gentleman. He's the director of, of our uh, community services and parks, Mr. Onik Blanikian. Thank you. Um, I hardly work, so I'm, I don't work hard. I hardly work. Anyway, with that being said, I do want to um, welcome everyone, um, and I also want to invite Senator Anthony Portentino uh, to say a few words, and as well as uh, Jason Maruka from LA County Supervisor Barger's office. So, Senator Portentino and Jason Maruka, please. And Senator Member Laura Freeman. Good afternoon, everyone. President oh. Sutter Begging, I have one little tweak on your thing with the kids. So this is the dad in me. I used to tell my kids all the time, for the next half day, you're in charge. We'll do whatever you want, as long as it doesn't require electricity. So I'd always put my kids in charge. I'd say, for four hours, we're, we're going to do whatever you want, but no electricity. And they would look at me. I said, we could fly a kite. We could read a book. We can go on a hike. You decide. So that's a way to put the kids in charge. So anyway, just a little tweak on your, on your contract. Think about that. Whatever you want to do, as long as it doesn't require electricity. But let's celebrate. Let's make some noise for being here today. This is really exciting. And as it's been said, this doesn't just happen in a vacuum. You have a willing city council, you have a parks and recs department, but you have activists who demand that we have open spaces, that we treasure our resources, that we create centers for education and opportunity. And so let's give all the activists and everybody a big round of applause for making this happen. Because it doesn't just happen. Um, I also want to give a shout out. I see Dottie, Dottie Sharkey here, one of those activists who helped make this happen. So let's give a big shout out the Dottie Sharkey, and the Sturdivant family is here as well. You know, Mark Sturdivant well, is a legend and continues to touch all of us. So we got to give a shout out to those folks who we stand on their shoulders that made this happen. So again, I'm just proud to be your state senator and to stand in solidarity with this movement of treasuring our open spaces and just treasuring our history and providing opportunities for our young people. So, President Sutterbegin, if you could come on up, I want to give you a state senate certificate to commemorate this opportunity. So, on behalf of the California State Senate, I join the Glendale community in welping, welcoming the opening of the Stone Barn Nature Center at Duke, Duke Magian Wilderness Park. Congratulations, and let's continue to do great work in this wonderful city of Glendale. God bless. I'm Laura Friedman. I am your representative in the State Assembly in the legislature in Sacramento. And before that, as many of you know, I was a Glendale City Council member for eight years. I promise I'm not going to make you do math. 
like my, my good friend Paula Devine. Uh, it's too early on a, on a weekend for that. Uh, but I do want to take you back a bit. Um, I, about 10 years ago, I remember being brought with my city council colleagues by the Glendale Police Department in a helicopter up to the 210. We couldn't go any further because at the time there was of course a raging fire in this park and throughout the Angeles Forest, the station fire. And it was really horrifying to see from the ground and even more so from the air. And we were watching the water dropping, planes go back and forth. We were watching the forces on the ground desperately trying to hold the fire back from getting to this barn, from getting to the houses that are in the neighborhoods below. And afterwards, when we were able to come up to the park and see the scope of the damage, which many of you know was profound in this area, people all around Glendale were absolutely heartbroken. They were heartbroken at the prospect of losing what it had taken so long to build in this area with a network of trails, with mature foliage. There was concern about the animals and their ability to come back. There was concern about the damage to the barn, which as you heard, have been undergoing renovations for many, many years. And there was, I can tell you from the council perspective, there was no doubt about the resources that were going to be put into restoring what needed to be restored and moving forward with the project. And the reason was because the community was so passionate about this very magical place. Now, I wanna remind you, to give you a little context, that we are right now in what is either the first or second most populous county in the United States of America. Los Angeles, the city that's just a couple blocks away from us, is the second most populous city in the entire nation. Look around. Do you feel like you're in a dense urban environment? You're, you don't get that feeling. And I will tell you, as someone who's lived in New York City, there is nothing like this in the next most populous city. And that's because the people of Los Angeles County and the people in Glendale and La Crescenta and the Crescenta Valley said, no, we want to protect our open space and we want to restore and recognize and still use into the future our history. And that's what this place represents. And what I love, as the mom of an eight-year-old, what I love about what's happening inside this building, and I'm so excited after all the years on city council, we talked about it and allocated money to this, being able to see it, is reminding those urban kids, and we've got a lot of urban kids in our, in our city, teaching them about what lives in these hills that they see sometimes from the, from the highway or from their houses across the way or from South Glendale, to come here and learn about the other sentient animals that they share this place with will uh, make them appreciate what we have done to restore this and save this and bring them out up into these trails so that they also recognize how special it is to be in an urban city that also has its, as its gateway into the Angeles Forest, this incredibly magical place. So I wanna thank the city council for you know, always being the stewards that you are, the Parks Commission, all of the activists, and there's so many of you here, the Boy Scouts for the beautiful uh, uh, welcoming to us here today and for what you do. And so thanks to all of you for being here. You're a huge part. And I also have, of course, a, an assembly certificate. It's to, a, to the barn, which is a little unusual for us. We are giving a certificate to, a, to, the, a, to the Stone Barn Nature Center, but you'll take it on its behalf, I'm sure. So thank you so much. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is uh, Jason Maruka. I'm from Los Angeles County Supervisor Catherine Barger's office. Uh, I'm happy to be here today uh, and represent the supervisor. Um, I know the supervisor is very proud that the county was able to come in and support this center and um, you know it looks beautiful. So we're, we're really excited to, to be a partner in the city of Glendale. We wanna thank the city of Glendale and the Parks Department for everything that they've done. Um, I think we've heard about you know, all the phases this has gone through and, you know, that work doesn't go unnoticed. So again, congratulations. And on behalf of Supervisor Barger, I'd like to present this certificate uh, to you. Thank you, uh, Assembly Member Friedman, Senator Portentino, and Jason Maruka. So thank you everyone for uh, spending your morning here. Uh, we are very excited uh, with this project um, finally completed. I know you guys can't wait to go in. Um, I took a sneak peek uh, yesterday and it's uh, very exciting. 
uh, the Community Service and Parks Department is looking forward to providing nature education programs, expanding our Glendale Outdoors program, so, um, developing our first ever nature education day camp. Uh, so hopefully within the next few months, we'll have our first nature education day camp up at the Duke for our uh, residents and our kids to enjoy. I would like to thank the mayor and uh, city council members for their continued support, as well as the executive team. Uh, this is a group effort. Uh, not only did staff from the Parks Department work so hard to get this project completed, we also had various employees from various departments, from community development, permit services, public works department, Glendale Fire, Glendale PD, legal department working on all these contracts, finance and purchasing. Thank you all um, for your support. Thank you for the executives and as well as staff. Many people deserve credit for getting this project completed. Um, I know uh, Council Member Majorian welcomed Jess Duran, our former director, uh, but Jess, thank you. I know you had a vision um, and one of, I remember one of our meetings, um, you had told me, Oni, you need to get this done, you need to get this done, and sure enough, we got it done. So thank you for your support. You were... <laughs> Jess was here for a number of phases. The phase that was completed in 2011, the seismic uh, retrofit, as well as the MEP, the mechanical systems, the HVAC and the electrical, thank, thank you. Another retired project manager is George Balteria. Where's George? George Balteria was, I believe George Balteria, I think, started the project back in the day. He was part of phase one and phase two, um, the park area in 2004, that completion, as well as John Pearson. Where's John? I know John's here too. George and John, thank you for your hard work. I also see a former uh, project manager, Leila Batar. Yeah. Is that Leila? Hi, Leila. Good morning. And I also want to thank current staff. Um, City Park Services and Park Planning, our Deputy Director Coco Panosian and his team. Coco. Chris Peplo and his team, they tackled the landscaping around the park and around the barn, getting ready for this event. We had our project manager, Peter Vahailik, who oversaw the project, the Nature Education Center. Thank you, Peter. Our recreation services staff, who will be in charge of programming the event. We have Teresa Alexanian, our deputy director of recreation. I know it's a lot. Gabrielle Golia, our senior community service supervisor. Norma Maurer. Seva Karabidian, Patty Bancourt, and our newest employee who's going to run the barn, Jackie. Right. I also like to thank Gwyn Pugh and Gwyn Pugh Studios. Um, he was the architect of our new restroom as well as the architect for the Nature Education Center component, and Thomas Hartman with IQ Magic. Thomas, we're still with you. Thank you. Tom Hartman and his team, Alex Dry and Cole Watson, they're responsible for uh, the exhibits and uh, the Nature Center. Um, I know we had a lot of back and forth, and we put pressure on your team and uh, thank you for uh, dealing with us, but we needed to get this open, as you see why. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, Last but not least, uh, I would like to remember a very special person who helped us get here today. Uh, this person put, our, put his heart and soul into the park into open space, into the Parks Foundation, into Trails and Open Space program. He started the Glendale Outdoors program to provide nature education to the children in Glendale. Uh, we were busing kids from South Glendale up to uh, the Duke to provide nature education. I made that. And, uh, and um, he basically was 
uh, an open space advocate. And um, if it wasn't for him, I don't think the exhibit would have been completed without his vision. He had a vision, and today his vision becomes a reality. And that's Mark Sturdivant. Mark, Mark Sturdivant was a uh, senior admin analyst with the city. He brought in over $17 million of grant funding for various projects in London. We have a, a number of new facilities, thanks to Mark and the funding he brought, as well as uh, funding that council allocated. But this was his baby. And I want to thank the Mark Sturdivant and the Sturdivant family for allowing Mark to work on this project. I remember um, when we visited Mark, um, his first words to me was, hi, Onik, how's the barn coming along? <laughs> and uh, I responded back, Mark, I'm doing well, how are you? <laughs> and sure enough, all he did was talk about the barn and his vision. And like I said earlier, that vision um, is coming to a reality. With that being said, I would like to invite um, Jeannie Sturdivant, Kimberly Sturdivant, and Bethany Sturdivant up. Um, we do like to, we have a, a small um, plaque that we would like to hang behind the uh, employee desk here in the barn to remember Mark and all the hard work that he uh, did in uh, making this uh, project uh, complete. So uh, Jeannie and Bethany and Kimberly and Mayor Devine and all the council members, if you can get up, please. Um, the, I'm going to read what the plaque says. Um, the City of Glendale Community Services and Parks Department honors Mark Sturdivant for setting the stones and paving the way to opening the Stone Barn Nature Center in Glendale. The city, the center is a symbol of his devotion, his vision, and to make Glendale Outdoors and nature education accessible to all. Now, these two sentences we pulled out from a number of grant applications and council reports that he had included when he submitted these reports for funding. And as Mayor Devine mentioned a couple minutes ago, um, he applied for the Santa Monica Conservancy Grant, an LA County grant for this project. And these are the exact words that Mark had put in the council report. So we want these words to stay with us as long as the bar is open. His unrelenting service to the community is commendable and praiseworthy. With immense and heartfelt gratitude, March 19, 2022. On behalf of the Community Services Parks Department, we thank Jeannie Sturdivant, Kimberly Sturdivant, and Bethany Sturdivant and, uh, for allowing Mark uh, to be part of this great uh, project. He's going to make a lot of children happy. Thank you. That being said, I would like to invite the vice chair of the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation and Hannah Maximova, who's the artist of the beautiful mosaic that's down there, to say a few words about the mosaic. If you haven't, if you haven't visited the mosaic, please take a look at it. It's beautiful. That's another project that was approved by 
our uh, city council, and this was a fundraising for the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation. The funds that they uh, collect are used for, to provide nature education and uh, fund our trails and open space programs. So I welcome uh, Manuel Macpapian and Hannah Maximova. Thank you. Recognized dignitaries, honored guests, thank you very much for being here today. My name is Manuel McPapian. I am the Vice President of the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation and the Chair of the Mosaic Committee. Uh, along with this incredible stone barn, I also wanted to invite you to enjoy, of course, this mosaic that was implemented and created by Hannah Maximova, um, and it's called the Breath of Duke Medjian Day. Uh, the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation commissioned this mosaic, uh, and it, we did so because we, on, we wanted to not only beautify this park and add art to it, but also because we wanted to raise funds to uh, promote par park projects, recreational programs, and open space activities that the foundation is known to support. Uh, I joined the Glendale Parks and Open Space Foundation a little over three years ago, and I was instantly provided with this task of raising as much money as I could for this incredible mosaic. Uh, now, for someone who doesn't have any background in fundraising or raising funds in any way, shape, or form, I think it's safe to say that I was definitely the best person uh, candidate for this job. <laughs> but because of our incredible mosaic committee and because of our, all our, uh, our hardworking friends at the Glendale Park and Open Space Foundation, and of course because of all your donations to purchase donor tiles, we were able to uh, not only meet the goal of $40,000, but we tremendously exceeded it. So I want to thank each and every one of you for purchasing a donor tile and donating to such a great cause in this beautiful park. Thank you so much. And just one of the things that I wanted to say uh, in regards to the sponsorship tiles and the reason why I think we were able to sell so many was because of this idea we kept telling people about leaving a legacy for the future. Uh, my father passed away many years ago, but one of the things that he kept telling me uh, was that one of the most important things that we could do is leave a positive legacy for future to build upon. Leave a positive legacy for our community to uh, beautify and become better for everybody to enjoy. And we hope that with these sponsorship tiles, uh, we provided people with the opportunity to leave a legacy for themselves and uh, for their future. Uh, now, the sponsorship tiles we cut off at the end of last year, but I'm very proud to announce that backed by popular demand, we are going to allow people to purchase sponsorship tiles again so they can leave a legacy for themselves. So. Uh, all those individuals who have already purchased sponsorship tiles, you could come to over to our booth down there and accept your thank you certificate and you could of course meet the artist. Uh, and of course, uh, all those who haven't purchased one yet, I urge you to do so with the knowledge that the money raised from these uh, sponsorship tiles will be used to support trail programs right here in Duke Medjian Park. So I wanted to thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you very much for being here today. Let's leave a legacy together because at the end of the day, our life on this planet is short, but the legacy we leave to our kids and to our grandkids and to our descendants that lasts forever. So without further ado, I wanted to thank everybody and I want to introduce the wonderful artist behind this uh, incredible mosaic, Ms. Hannah Maximova. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I feel like we had so many dates when this was gonna open and I can't believe it finally is opening. It's so wonderful. And all the work of all the people who brought that about just really blows me away. And I'm so grateful. Um, I'll be quick, but when I was a kid, one of my favorite things was wandering off into the desert. I'm from Tucson. And sitting, careful not to sit on thorns. And just eventually settling down and getting calm. And then I could hear bugs. I could see birds. I could get settled. And nature joined me. And nature welcomed me. And that was such a precious experience. And I feel that at the mosaic table. And I feel that very much in this park. And I'm so grateful to be able to share that presence, that consciousness through this artwork. And I'm proud and grateful to be a part of this wonderful place that the Nature Center welcomes us into nature. This is a portal into that part of us that is recognized and is welcome and is part of the world. And the plants and animals 
are related to us and part of us. And it's such a pleasure to feel settled and connected. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. And I have to also pitch the um, donor wall is a wonderful thing. And I bought a tile for my recently departed mother. And it's wonderful to have her name in this wonderful place. This, this is a magical place. This place is an opportunity. There are so many animals <laughs> and amazing plants. It's the worldwide epicenter of the Manzanita genus, more than anywhere else in the world. In my research, I was so happy to find that that um, everybody who brought this about and everybody who supports this, thank you so much. Thank you for giving us all the opportunity and thanks to the past generations that preserved this so that we could have that experience of presence. And I'm so excited to go inside and see it done. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. We have one more speaker. Uh, this is a guest that has a uh, interesting story. Um, I'd like to introduce Denise Le Messenger, Le Messenger, the great grandchild of George Le Messenger, to say a few words. So I want to say uh, it's an honor and a privilege. And uh, I lived here uh, in a workman's cottage, but my grandparents lived here. My great-grandfather, of course, was here. And um, w when I have listened to all your speakers, and I'm sorry to take up any more of your time <laughs> talking, but when I... I could understand the gravity of how many players, all the moving parts, I, I, I am just uh, humbled um, and ecstatic about being able to walk this land because this could have been homes, this could have been developed. And I, I connected with my great-grandfather and I've been to his grave in France and he would be so, so delighted at what has been done here and the history preserved. It is, um, it is magnificent. Uh, these trails, I have walked them uh, after they were developed from Le Menage Lookout, a, 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 a special place for me. You can see 180 degrees. It, and. I, I used to walk the, these trails early in the morning. I'm a flight attendant for United, and I would head off to Australia or Auckland, New Zealand, and I'd come up here in the morning, sometimes when uh, the, the fog was on the ground, and I would meet deer, and I, yeah, I saw a tarantula. Watch, <laughs> watch out for the snakes. Um, uh, the eucalyptus tree that has been in this area for years there, the eucalyptus tree is still up here. Um, there are trees. Uh, as a little girl riding a horse, um, I, I was riding a horse before I was riding a bike, but I can remember getting knocked off as, as my horse. I was not uh, strong enough to control him, walked right under a tree, these trees that are here now. So... It, it is a privilege. I wish I could have met Governor Duke Magian and thanked him. My brother and I are the last of the line. And I just want to say what a privilege it is to walk these trails and be here with all of you and know that you are enjoying this place uh, that was my home. And it has been turned into a magnificent nature park. I won't take any more of your time. Please approach me um, if you have any questions. George was uh, 64 years old when he went off to fight in World War I. He really was. And he became a liaison officer with General Pershing. I have a notebook. I have many, many artifacts um, regarding my great-grandfather. But he was quite a man. And um, thank you for remembering him. 
in this building that my grandfather built. Um, and it's just an honor to be here. Thank you very much. One, two, three.